English, but it's spelled mm in the Greek. Let's go into the word right now. First Samuel chapter 10 from verse 5 to 7. Let's read together. After that you shall come to the heel of God, where the Philistine garrison is. And it shall happen when you have come here into the city. There you shall meet a group of prophets coming down from the high place with a string instruments, a tambourine, a flute, and a harp before them. And they shall be prophesying. And the Spirit of God shall come upon you. And you shall prophesy with them and be turned into another man. And let it be when these signs come upon you, then you do as the occasion demands, for God is with you. Hallelujah. Let's take our seats. There was an impartation that was required for Saul to rise from where he was to take the seat of the king. And this impartation came in stages. So this scripture reveals the mystery of impartations for the rising of men and women into unlikely seats. For I speak to you by the Spirit that just as Saul stepped into an unlikely seat, a seat of authority that he did not anticipate that he would ever move into. So right now, under the sound of my voice, there are men and women who by the anointing are going to rise to take seats that they never anticipated that they would be in or walk in. I am here to tell you that by the Spirit, seats of authority, seats of authority have been opened for many under the sound of my voice. And just like Saul, you would rise there and take those seats and fulfill your role in the kingdom of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, I want you to hear this. So the first thing that happened is that Samuel prophesied, Samuel prophesied to Saul. He prophesied to Saul and he revealed to Saul what the picture of his future looked like. He revealed to Saul what the destiny was. So the first thing that he did was that what? He released the seed of the word. Because Jesus said in the parable of the sower, is the sower sows the word. He says the seed is what? The word of God. Now the seed is actually the sperm of God. See, the seed is the what? Is the sperm of God. But it's an incorruptible seed. Peter talks about the incorruptible seed of the word of God. That means it's a seed that cannot be corrupted. There is no environment that can corrupt the word. That the word is invincible. That the word overpowers environments. So the word can overpower your sickness. So when the word of God came, that I was going to be a prophet to the nations. Hallelujah. When I was a 16-year-old boy, there was a contradiction in my body. Because I was a stammerer and I had asthma. But the word that came revealed to me that I will be a prophet. And that seed that was put into my heart overcame the stammering. It overcame the asthma. It overcame the insecurity. So I'm here to prophesy that whatever is contending, the word that God has spoken to you, that word shall overcome it in the name of Jesus. That word shall overcome it in the name of Jesus. There is no way in the natural that I could preach. I could not even answer a telephone because the storm wind was so bad. But guess what? The Holy Spirit healed me. The power of God healed me because of the incorruptible. So shall my word be that proceeded out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish that which I want purpose it to accomplish. So I'm here to tell you that the word that came from God to you, that word, hallelujah, it shall come to pass. But there's an equation for it to come to pass. Now, they need to understand that because the word is seed, Jesus also explained, he says, the, the good ground is the what? It's the heart of man. So if the word is seed, then you are ground. So in the realm of the spirit, you are ground. Now what does seed need when it's in the ground for it to produce fruits? Oh, it needs what? Water. 
And so what you got to do, the Bible says, ha, he says, blessed, ha, bless the Lord. Ha, he says, he bring it forth what? In Psalms 1, he bring it forth fruit in its season. So there is an agricultural cycle, there is a spiritual cycle that works like an agricultural cycle in which there are cycles of what? Seed time and harvest time. But in this scenario, here you had a man that was chosen to be king. And he was chosen to be king because of Israel's disobedience. So God had to fast track the process. My God. I said God had to fast track the process because it was not the perfect plan of God that Israel have a king. So the Lord had to fast track the process. So Saul was not somebody who had gone through a long process of preparation to be king. So God had to fast track it. Oh, are you listening to me? So he had to fast track the preparation. So he so so, so God did not want Saul to wait for the normal cycles of the spirit to take place. And for the normal cycles of the spirit to take place, and he got into a season where the reign of the spirit will come upon him and the seed of the king on the inside of him will develop and he will emerge. Like if you look at David, David went through more of a what? A process. But Saul didn't, Saul's process was what? Short-circuited. So how was the process short-circuited? How did the process get a turbo boost? Ay, ay, ay. I know about turbo boosts. I shared in the first service. When I came to Barbados, I still had the speed, the speed, uh, the speed uh, switch on the inside of me. Because I like driving fast. Ay, ay, ay. I like driving fast. I like highway driving. <laughs> Hallelujah. I like driving a car so fast, I press the foot on, until the accelerator touches the ground. And I say, give me more. Give me more. Give me more. Give me more. Rabba Oh, Lord. That's me in England. So I came from that. Driving on the highway. It's like, my God, can this car not give me more? Lava rasada da basaya. Hey, hallelujah. Ramani sadisa. So I like speed. So I, instead of studying Barbados, I was so caught up with my speed that I did not buy a car according to the reality of Barbados. I bought the car according to my desire. That's what happens to some people. They marry according to their desire, not according to reality. They do stuff according to desire. So instead of me checking to see what the roads of Barbados are like, I went and got myself a V6 car that had a switch called the speed switch. That is the switch that you use when you're about to overtake somebody and they decide to drive faster. Hey, hey. You just, they say switch. When you press the switch, the car goes into turbo. And you overtake them like a jet engine. Hey. Oh, Lord. I mean, I like, hey. I like to leave people for dead. It's like, I just go like, boom. God. I say, I know the one buys the dust. Hey. Dun, 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 dun. Another one buys the dust. Hey. <laughs> Rabba Mashad. That was my mentality. <laughs> I'll tell you the truth. That was my mentality. Bless the Lord. If I take so many stories of this, but we'll go to those stories. I'll tell you, boy, of me and the police and speeding. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. But I always, because I'm humble, I always, the day I got caught, I escaped. Because of humility and reverence. Because the police caught me speeding. And the police caught me doing some real strange things on the road. And the police officer said, what are you doing? I said, I'm doing something very stupid. <laughs> he said, you know you're stupid. I said, I'm very aware. I'm very stupid. He said, you know you're stupid. I said, I know. I'm very stupid. <laughs> so why did you do this stupid thing? Because I'm stupid. Huh. He knows he's stupid. I said, yes. Because you know you're stupid. And you know what to do was stupid. 
I won't arrest you. I said, yes, I am very aware I'm stupid. He said, next time, don't be stupid. I said, yes, sir. <laughs> Escaped. Hallelujah, hey, Jesus. You need humility. Hey. When you're caught, you need humility. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, bless the Lord. Hey. <laughs> bless the Lord. <laughs> oh, my God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Bless the Lord. But I'm here to tell somebody that Saul could not wait for the agricultural cycle. He could not wait for the cycle of the Spirit. Because the cycle of the Spirit that operated in the life of David, if he had waited for that, it would have taken years before he was, pre before he was prepared. So God had to short circuit it. And this is the way God short circuit it. God said, this is what we're going to have to do. You, you cannot operate like earth operates because if it is, if you plant in January, the rainy seasons are not here yet. You're going to wait. But do you know that it's raining in another part of the world? But you cannot take your farm in St. Joseph and take it and transport it to where it's raining in Africa. Get the rain, bring it back to Barbados and reap the harvest. But you can do it as a human. Jesus. As a human, you, you are a mobile earth. That's what the Bible says, that you have this treasure in earthen vessels. So what, the, what, what Samuel said, he said, I am going to send you to an environment where it is raining. Jesus. He said, you shall come into a group of prophets. Ha <laughs> ha! It says, and they shall be prophesying. So the first thing you're going to understand is that you're going to understand in order to get a top of boost, you've got to go into a location where it is raining. Because the Holy Ghost moves like rain. And that means when the Holy Ghost, because the Holy Ghost moves like rain, it means it could be raining on the second row. And it's not raining on the third row. It could be raining on you. You, A husband and wife could be lying on the bed. And it's raining on the wife. And the husband is wondering, wow, bro, God is really touching her. It's not raining on you. Are you with me? So, so because the thing about rain, there is what? A rain line. Ah, yeah, yeah. Rain has a place where it begins and a place where it's here. So rain by nature is territorial. Oh, boy. Rain is what? Locational. Ha, rain is territorial and locational. So, what the prophet was saying, right now, you right now in the location where you are, it's not raining. But I'm going to send you to a location where it's raining. Because I need the rain of the spirit to, talk, to get into contact with the seed of the king in you. My God. Because if the rain, the rain of the spirit needs to get in contact with the seed of the king in you so you can arise and take your seats. Boy, can I preach this thing to somebody? Oh, does somebody want to turbo boost? You see, there's somebody who has lost time needs to understand how to redeem time. So I'm showing you how to get back time is to come under a, a intensive prophetic unction. Because prophetic unction operates outside of time. Oh boy. Ha. The prophet stands in two places. The prophetic office, not the prophecy. The office of the prophet stands in the realm of eternity and stands in the realm of time. That is why, as a prophet, you need to go to school and development because you will mess yourself up in reading things in eternity and reading things in time. Because when you read something in eternity, eternity doesn't have any time. So you read it and you see, ooh, ah, I'm seeing myself a millionaire, huh, in the realm of the spirit. Then you come to the natural uh, and you say, well, are we, we, we are going to be millionaires. But you saw it in eternity, and in eternity, everything is now. Can I preach to somebody? I say everything is now. So when you see in eternity, it is now. In time, it's process. Boy, can you? So, so that's it messes up prophets. Hey, it messes up prophets. 
Like my father would say, he would get caught up in visions. And he would see plain loads of people coming to the church. And the congregation is 24. You think like, my God, boy, this thing is going to expand. The next day is seven. <laughs> that time by my side. He's like, what's the vision? <laughs> because he's seen in eternity. Hallelujah. In the realm where everything is now. So the prophet sees it and he feels it's now. So he has to now come into the realm of time and decode it. Hey. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. It is a craft. It is a craft. That is why there are schools for it. You have to go in this. You have to understand this thing. You have to study this thing. It is not easy. So he said, we need to get this guy into a location where it is raining. So prophets stand in two places. That is why you can see Isaiah prophesying. And he's prophesying to people. Then he starts prophesying to Lucifer. Then he comes back to people. He said, wait, who is he talking to? He's like, here. Then he's here. Then he's here. Then he's here. Then he's here. There's the duality of the prophetic. Man, they can So the prophetic has an ability to cause time hey, to be fast. Hey. So the prophetic can cause time to be suspended. Jesus. Hi, yeah, 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 yeah. Prophetic unction can redeem time. Oh. Just like evangelistic unction can bring the masses to the Lord. Prophetic unction can bring eternity into time. Jesus. Levra Sigadagasai. It is in the unction of the prophets. It is in the, the tools of the prophets. Like how a carpenter has tools. So a prophet has tools. That is why a prophet can go to the past. So I can stand here and go. And I say, hmm. I say, I'm going to your past. So I can stand. So, so for me to go to your past, it means I've, I've done what? I've gone above time. Because I'm seeing you in the present. I can stand and go to the past. Then I can come to the present. Then I can go to the future. Then I come back to the present. So I'm moving outside of what? Time. Zavraman is seated. So he had to send him to a place where there was a prophetic unction. Jesus. When he sent him to that place. So the first thing that had to happen was there had to be location. Then the second thing he said, you shall be changed into another man, which means there had to be an expectation of faith that I am going to be changed. That is why it is impossible to thoroughly detail, release fullness of prophetic unction to people who are not in a receiving mode. That is why if you find out, my father, he doesn't bother. Or oh, Meshwan doesn't bother with people who don't want to receive. Because this moves. Okay, okay, next. You're not ready. Next. You know why? Because prophetic unction, prophetic unction requires a response. Prophesy. Expectation prophesy. puts a demand on the prophetic. But you see, expectation what puts a demand on the prophetic. So the, everybody who received the prophetic cried or yearned after the prophetic. Love Rabbi. Now, evangelistic anointing does not need you to yearn for it. Evangelistic anointing operates by the fishnet hook principle. That means it hooks you when you don't know. So the evangelist does not need you to be hungry for God. The anoint, you see, each the anoint the evangelist operates by fishnet. He will throw a fishnet, you'll be caught in the net. Then we know how you go to the altar and say, You said and say, wait, what did I just do? I just received Jesus. Ah, uh, how come? Because I, 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 I. 
Because it's the anointing to do what? Draw you to the altar. Oh, Lord. Boy, we need some evangelists. But the prophet is not there to draw you. The prophet is what you call premium that you don't get if you don't pay the price. That's what the Bible says. He that doeth good to a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. It never said about the evangelist's reward. Because the evangelist doesn't carry a reward. The evangelist carries a net that catches you whether you want to be caught or not. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Whether you like it or not, you're going to confess them sins. Whether you like it or not, you're going to, hey, you're going to bring your holy, your unholy self to the altar. Oh, hallelujah. My God. That's evangelistic anointing. When you have, you see, just like there's the atmosphere of the prophetic, right now there's a prophetic atmosphere. Even so, you can have an evangelistic atmosphere. I had a friend of mine, Mama Mion. I said, Mama Mion, truly I know you're anointed. Hi. Mama Mion came to Barbados and got the immigration officer, Bayesian immigration officer, to receive Jesus right there. Hey! You have to be anointed for that one. Barbados, immigration officer. Hey! See the. Hey! Have you know what I'm talking about? They don't smile. Hey, hey, they have an administrative poker face. Hey, how do you do that one? Hey, <laughs> are you with me? So I'm just telling you about different anointings. But the prophetic anointing is an anointing that you have to make a demand for it. You have to provoke it. She got up behind. That's why Jesus, in speaking about the prophetic, he says, he says, he says, there were many lepers in Israel, but none was cleansed but Naaman. But the anointing to cleanse them was on Elisha, but they did not make a demand on the anointing. So the prophet does not go after people. People go after the prophets. Jesus. Hey, can I preach to somebody? Hey, love Rabbi Hosea. So, so you got to honor the anointing. That's why I say a prophet is without honor. You don't have to honor the evangelist. The evangelist doesn't require your honor. The evangelist is collecting you. Does wait, wait, wait. Does a fish need to honor the bait? Honor is not required. It is say an evangelist is without honor in his own country. Evangelist doesn't need honor. Just going to collect all of you. The anointing is going to hit you all. You're going to, you're going to repent even before you know you're repenting. Shakalabasai. It's evangelistic grace. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Lord. But prophet is a different ballgame. You need to honor it. So, so the second thing about the prophetic is that so he had to go there expecting to be transformed. Then the third thing he said, reverse the scripture. It says there that he had to do what? He says, when you go there, you will do what? You would say, prophesy what they're prophesying. And the Lord said, he says, that's called mouth, appropri mouth appropriation. That he says, your mouth appropriating what the prophet is saying. He says, you need to say what the prophet is saying. He says, there's a sound in the prophet's mouth. He says, and what the prophet is sounding, you must sound. He says, it is like a marriage. He says, the prophetic does not work for you, except you marry the prophetic transaction. The minister says, Andre Thomas, do you take Nina Thomas to be thy husband? No, to be thy wife? Don't go to your house. To be thy wife? And I say, I do. That's my frequency. I do frequency. But we are not married until she says what? I do. So the prophet says, 
I'm prophesying in the month of March, there shall be an Esther rise. Hey! La, pa, 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 pa. Hey! Like Esther rose up, so men and women shall rise up. So the prophet prophesies. When the prophet prophesies, there has to be what? There has to be a response. That means your mouth has to say, in the month of March, I rise. Hey! I with me. That's how the transaction is happening. The evangelist doesn't need that. The teacher doesn't need that. The pastor doesn't need that. The apostle doesn't need that. But the prophet, oh boy, you need to prophesy with the prophet to receive prophetic transactions. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. That is why prophetic churches say, I receive. Because, you see, it's, it, it is the transaction. Because they understand the nature of the prophetic office. If your minister is a pastor, you don't have to say, I receive. Because the pastor is supposed to do what? He is going to lead you into green pastures. So, with the pastor, you connect with the pastor. And then the pastor says, I'm going to take you out of this bondage. And I'm going to take you into this. You say, yes, pastor. And you follow the pastor. And the pastor takes you. You're following the pastor. And the pastor takes you from glory to glory. You're following the pastor. And the pastor takes you. So, the pastor depends. The pastor anointing is built on connection. That is why the says, the sheep hear his voice. So, the, the pastor, they hear the voice of the shepherd. And they connect with the shepherd. And they follow the shepherd. But it doesn't say follow the prophet. It says receive a prophet's reward. That means the prophet is transactional. That means the prophet comes with a package. My God, that Baba. That says that the prophet is a package ministry. That you got to come ready to receive the package. Hey. So if you listen to the prophet with the eyes of a pastor, you will miss it. Oh, can I push this thing? Ha. The apostle is different. The Bible says, and they, and, they, and they listened and they heard the apostle's doctrine. Because apostles, the word apostle, one of the words for apostle is the word visa. Or passport. That means apostles come with the visa and the passport to another dimension. Jesus. <laughs> Can I preach this thing? Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, with the apostle, the apostle, apostles come with a curriculum in the spirits. So, when you catch the curriculum in the spirit, the curriculum in the spirit, it thrusts you to a different dimension. So, apostles are dimension shifters. Jesus. Hey. <laughs> hey, so the way you relate with an apostle is different from the way you relate with a prophet. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. So, like I told you, I'm a retired bishop. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, so I came today with a Esther, hey, with a Esther Rise package. Black God, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey! The prophetic I ambassador came. of wisdom, power, and miracles. I came with that package. Came with that package. That's what I came with. La -ba -ba -ba. Came to deposit it. Woo! Hallelujah. Shagadai. You see, that's what, when Jesus was preached like a prophet, he says, I am anointed, but I know none of you are going to receive it. Because guess what? Elijah had anointed to cure leprosy and only name and receive it. So you're, you are like them. Hey, hey. That's what Jesus was telling them. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. That's a prophet. He speaks different. Lavra Asadisa. Lambda also go the Moses. That is why when I'm in an apostolic mode, my personality, the pursuit of my gift is different. I'm more in coaching mode. But right now, the coach, 
the coach garment is in my is in my wardrobe at home. Check that out behind. Zavra is there behind. Hey, lagada zada, ranta manda sete. Oh Lord, Hallelujah. Oh glory to God. Somebody say, I receive my package. I receive my package. So when you come to a service where a prophet is there, you come to receive a package. You come to receive a transaction in the spirit. Oh, hallelujah. Now the office of the teacher or the office of the teacher or the coach is there to enlighten you. Because when, because here's the thing, in order for your life to change, your mind has to be renewed. So the teacher is in charge of the renewing of the mind. So the teacher brings illumination. Um, so when your mind renews, your life renews. So that is why when you come to a teacher, you have to come as a student. So when you sit before a teacher, when you sit before a coach, you need to come as a student. You need to put yourself, okay, I'm here to learn. Are you with me? So you need to know how to behave in front of every anointing. Oh boy, can I push this? So you can receive from that anointing. I just gave you a myth secret. That's why I am a receiving master. I receive. When I see an anointing, I assess the anointing and I posture myself based on the anointing. How to receive from that anointing. Jean Gadabasai. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just decoded it for you. Ha, it seems like second service is more blessed than first service. I don't know. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. Shake God the Santa Basai. Oh, hallelujah. Woo! Now, let's turn to the next scripture. So, next scripture. Now, Esther chapter 2, verse 15, verse 19. It says, And when the turn came, be together. And when the what? When the turn came for Esther, the daughter of Ahitel, the uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her as his daughter to go into the king, she requested nothing but what Haggai, the king's Enoch, the custodian of the woman, advised. And Esther obtained favor in the sight of all who saw her. So Esther was taken to King Azarias into his royal palace in the 10th month, which is the month of Tebeth, in the seventh year of his reign. The king loved Esther more than all other women, and she obtained grace and favor in his sight, more than all the virgins, and he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Ashti. Now, let's go back to the, to the beginning of the scripture. It says here, amazing scripture. It says, and when the turn came, and when the turn came for Esther, now I am here to prophesy to you that prophesy. the month of March is your turn. Hey! 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 Oh! 
You see, transactions are happening now. You see, transactions are happening. Transactions are happening. Anointings are coming on people. Change is happening. Impartations are happening. Transactions are happening. Transactions are happening. Transactions are happening. Transactions are happening. Rising is happening. By the anointing. 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 Shut up about Satan. By the anointing. Shut up behind. Man, get ahead of it. Woo! Jesus. Love a heart. Love a heart. Let's go to the next scripture. Next scripture. Love a heart of a high. Love a heart of a high. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo! My God. There's an impartation happening. Transactions are happening right now. Transactions are happening. Transactions are happening. Transactions are happening. Transactions are happening. Rising is 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 happening. You see, the anointing, the anointing, the room anointing is being released now. It's being released now. It's being released now. It's been released now. It's been released now. It's been released now. Rapta Daba says, Rapa Pashata, Mandere Hotai, Rapa Bahatai, Rapta Shotele, Rapta Lava Sete, Rapa Bahoto Sede. Oh, 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 Mandere Sete, Rada Bahasarai. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, la bahata she, la daba basete, mandere beseke. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hotel about sete ya, mandere beba ketebes, la papa to shotele besete debesi. Oh, la gata kete se. Rabba Papa Shedi. Lava Rabbe Shedi. Renda Rabba Saraba. Hey. 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 Zaraba Basse. Transactions are happening. Transactions are happening. Transactions are happening. Transactions are happening. Lava Rabbe Shedi. Lava Rabba Shedi. You shall rise, you shall rise, you shall rise, you shall rise. You shall rise, everybody. You shall rise, everybody. La da de 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 and you take the seat. Jeez. You take the seats. The thing about seats, seats do not come to where you are. You go to where they are. You got to rise to the dimension where the seat is. So seats do not find you. You find them. You rise to them. Oh, yes. 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 Shake that high. Oh, la baba shadaba. La breve reve shedebere. La de shatara borobo. There's a rising in this place. I said, there's a rising in this place. There's a rising in this place. Oh, yes. 
is the room anointing. Is the room anointing that's been released. The room anointing. Zabarasa. First Samuel chapter 2, verse 6 to 8. Now, this reveals different dimensions of God. It says the Lord kills. That means there's the dimension of God that kills people and kills things. So you can have a man of God who operates in the killing dimension of God. If you find that type of man of God, like Archbishop Bessie in the Husa, hey, Shaka die. This is a man who moves in the dimension of the Lord kills. Then there's the dimension of the Lord makes alive. That he's resurrects from the dead. He'll make your organs come alive. That's a dimension of healing and miracles. The Lord makes alive. So you can find a man of God who moves in the dimension of make alive. But does he move in the dimension of killing? But Elijah moved in both. Jesus. Hey! He can make alive and he can kill. If I be a man of God, let fire fall from heaven. So these are what? Dimensions. It's the Lord, but they're dimensions. So there are people who do not operate in them, but th that dimension is there. Jesus. Then there are dimensions the Lord makes poor. Then this is a dimension in which you can command people who are stealing, who have broken every covenant of God. And you command their wealth to be removed. Very few people and move in that dimension. The Lord makes poor. That means this is a dimension in which you have an anointing that can bring empires down. Oh, yeah. I remember my father was saying there's a man of God who, who is called the expert. He's called the change of government expert. Whenever anybody wants a government change, they call him. He knows the triggers to press to cause a government to be changed. He moves in that dimension. <laughs> he, he said, okay, he said, he said, that's his speciality. To cause the first change of government. So he knows the triggers to press. Because he moves in that dimension. Hey. You see, men of God are dimensional. Hey. They are stewards of dimension. So when you talk about commanders, territorial commanders, you don't understand. A commander is somebody that has command over a dimension. So there's a dimension at your command that you can command the dimension to manifest. Jesus. Hi. He says he brings law. That's the same dimension. He brings law. That means this is the dimension in which it can unseat leadership. This is the dimension that can unseat leadership. The, the other dimension before is one that can unseat wealth. The next one, it can unseat leadership. It's the dimension in God. They can unseat leadership. <laughs> then there's a dimension that can do what? Lift. Now the word there is the word room. Room anointing. So that's the anointing I came today with. I came because I have command over the dimension to lift. It's why God said, take a people from bondage to greatness. That means there is a grace on me. I have command over that dimension. Except you don't connect with my grace. We you connect. cannot be around me and not get lifted up. Hey, that is my grace. You cannot be around me and not get lifted to higher dimension. It is it, it's not possible. That means you only know me in the natural. You haven't connected with my grace. I remember when the Lord showed me as a kid, 16 year old, 17 year old boy, he said, your mission is that I will ask you to lay down your life for other people to become great. And when you do that, you'll be a very blessed man. So I know my mission is for other people to become great. 
I am sent for the greatness of many. Oh, yeah. I receive. Hey, that's what I'm sent. Shake and Abahai. Hi. Zavra Abashish. She said, and the Lord brings her. Now, it then now focuses on how he lives. He says he raises the poor from the dust and lifts, that's the word, Rome anointed, Rome. He lifts the beggar from the ash heap. You know what the ash heap is? That means for you to be down, things have to be destroyed. Because the ash heap is the remnants of things that have been burnt. So you need to understand that if you're low, Satan destroyed some things. He destroyed some opportunities. There are things that get burnt and destroyed. So he says you're in an ash heap. My God. I came to prophesy to people Prophesy. who are in an ash heap. Labahai. I came with an anointing to move you from your ash heap. Oh, hallelujah. Labai, I came with that transaction today. Jesus. Woo. So he says, he lifts the beggar. Because what he's saying, the reason why he calls them a beggar is not, is not speaking about begging on the road. He says that when you're in the hardship, you are begging for what got burnt. Because your spirit had it. It belongs to you. But it's now ash. So your spirit is begging for it. Is it? And you say it again. Your spirit had it. You had it. But it got burnt. It's like, this is my, it's like, where am I right now? This is not me. I know I am better than this. I know there's more to me than this. So your spirit is begging for the thing that you know is yours. But the problem is you're in a what? Ash heap. Things have been burnt. Destroyed. He says he lifts the beggar out of the ash heap. And he sets them among princes. So, the lifting anointing or the Rome anointing, what it does, it always, when it begins to move, the first thing that begins to happen, you see God beginning to change your network. You see, God will bring you into a particular network. The reason why he brings you into the network is because in that network, that the anointing that you need is reigning there. Oh, yeah. That is why when he needed to shift Saul, he brought Saul into a network of prophets. Oh, yeah. Boy, can I preach this thing? Preach it. He brought him into that network. He had to change where he was and bring him into that environment. Because in that environment, that particular anointing was flowing. I knew this mission as much as I've been to heaven three times. I see angels. I can't count how many times I've seen angels. It's so many. It's, it's uncountable now. I see angels every month. But with all of that, I knew this mission will never get done until I find myself under emeritus. You were angel. Probably angel. Because I know how the spirit here operates. And I know, regardless of everything that I've seen, Jesus saw more than me, but he did a John. <laughs> Jesus. Are you stupid? Hey, ignoramus. I knew. I told my wife. I said, wife, the number one thing I need right now is I need this. And I do not need a, a relationship afar. I need an intimate relationship. That's what I need. That's what my spirit needs. 
to, 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 this is what is required for this thing to be birthed. The way it's supposed to be birthed. I need to be under that. Because I understood the type of environment, the type of network I needed to be in. Because I was taken in the spirit and I saw myself among 21 men. <laughs> and all of them were commanders in the spirit and commanders in the natural. They were commanders. And I was in the midst of them. And I was brought into them. And among them was my dad. Among them was Major One. And I was brought in the midst of them. And so I knew I have to be among commanders. Are you with me? Or this mission can't get done. It's as much as I've seen visions. <laughs> the visions is part of the equation, but it's not finished yet. <laughs> so it says, and the Lord sets him among princes. And after he does that, the anointing that's among the princes makes something happen. It says, you shall come into a company of prophets. You shall prophesy with them and you shall be turned. Yes. Means, you shall be made. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, you shall be made. You shall be turned. You shall be made. You shall be turned. Now, do you know you can be in the environment but if you're not intelligent about how it works, it will not work for you. Because in the realm of the spirit, everything is knowledge activated. If you want to know, the trigger of the spirit realm is knowledge. The knowledge operates in the spirit realm like a button. Knowledge is a button. It presses, boom, and turns things on and off. It's why Jesus called it the key of knowledge. Yeah. Knowledge is the key of the spirit realm. It's what Jesus called knowledge. Shikala Mahat. Zavra Abarasa. So he said, and he makes them inherit the throne of glory. What does that mean? It means inside of you there's glory. Esther had the glory of a queen. But she was an orphan. She had the glory of a political diplomat of the highest order who can sit in front of her enemy that wants to extinguish her people and the enemy do not feel or sense that she's about to order him to the gallows. And she can give her enemy hospitality. Hey, boy, that's some diplomatic grace. When the odds are so high, and you are a woman. In a man is hard. A woman whose range of emotions are wider. The rainbow of female emotions is wider than the different colors men can have. Is that, that's because God gave women wombs to nurture. So the nurture has a wider range. The anointing and the grace was able to temper that, control that, and operate in this that him man would live and say, Wow, the Lord has favored me today, wife. Hey, <laughs> we're changing levels. <laughs> and he's not be able to suspect or smell anything. He's ready to not detect anything. That's an amazing woman. And then she had the leadership to pull, you see. There are people, like, I remember I was, <laughs> I was uh, coaching one of my spiritual daughters who sends a call to politics. And I asked her certain questions. And I said, do you have the grace to pull the trigger? Because if you can't pull the trigger, you're not a politician. When, what do you mean pull the trigger? That means you, there's a grace to pull a trigger that's going to destroy other people's lives. But you are willing to pull the trigger and you're able to sleep at night and have peace. This is some of you, that's the thought. Hey, I can't. That means you're not a politician. 
Because the politician requires the governance of nations. And in the governance of nations, there are always the rising and the falling of people. And she was able to pull the trigger and say, I don't want Haman to be killed only. I want all his brothers, all his family, all of them killed. So that when the demon, because she knows when Haman is dead, the demon will leave. But the first place it will go, it will be the son or the brother to keep in the family. So to ensure there is total deliverance, every one of them must die. So she was willing to pull the trigger and still eat. You. If you and somebody have an argument, you can eat for two days. <laughs> right with me? Well, you can't eat, can eat, for, can eat, eat for two days. That means you, 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 you don't have the ability. You, you have to, okay. You cannot be lead in politics, lead countries, and not, not have the ability to pull the trigger. Because whenever you are leading a country, your judge, that means a judge, you have to be able to send some people to the gallows. And when you send them to the gallows, after you go after that, you go and sip your smoothie. Like smoothies. It's a grace. They, they, are, they are about to die. And you drink your smoothie. Hi, honey. How are you? Bless the Lord. For some of you, you'll be dreaming the person in the gallows. <laughs> you say, the ghost is haunting me. The ghost is haunting me. No. That's not your line of work. <laughs> but Esther, hey, she said, annihilate them all. And not only that, Esther then prophesied. Because after Esther annihilated them all, I learned this from my spiritual father. After Esther annihilated them all, the king came back to him, came back to her and said, what do you want? She said, I want you to annihilate all the ten sons of Haman. But he said already, they are hardly been killed. And my spiritual father, who is an expert at decoding hard sentences, because that's a hard sentence to understand. When Hitler's generals were being killed, they were, they were because in war crimes, you're supposed to die by firing squad. But the judge ordered them to die by the gallows. One of the generals said, as she was about to die, he said, Esther's prophecy is now being fulfilled. And all of them that were died were 10 of them. That means Esther prophesied that the next person that will seek to extinguish the Jews, all 10 of them will die by gallows. And all 10 of them, and the man said, the German guy said, Esther's prophecy is being fulfilled today. So she was, so because that so that is her glory but there was a day when all esther was doing was doing washing uh, she was just uh, her, the highlight of her day was to wash dishes and walk up and down that means she did not have a seat that matched her glory oh my god she had that glory but did not have a seat that matched the glory. But on that day, when she rose, she stepped into a seat that matched the glory. And that's why it's called the throne of glory. Because it's a seat, but it's a seat that enthrones you. It's a seat that makes you a king or queen. It's a, it's a seat that makes you a leader. When you step in that seat, you become a leader. Is a leadership seat. This is the mug. There are seats in the 12 spheres of leadership. Let's look at the 12 spheres. Go right to the end. There's a seat. 
the seats in media, seats <laughs> in organizations, in politics, in the military, in social, in, phil in philosophy, education, spiritual, family, judicial, entrepreneur, asset and children, media. Somebody says, what is the city family? It could be God has called your womb to produce the person that discovers the cure for AIDS. Your womb bears it. You see, you need to understand, there are certain wombs that bear special... You see, there are, it's like I was explaining to a man of God who prophet Ibn Angel was. And the Lord gave me a way of explaining it. You know, my gift concepts. And I said, to understand who he is, let me explain it this way. I said, ever so often, you have men and women that God sends in the 12 spheres of leadership that are worn in a generation. So I said, in the field of, of arts and entertainment leadership, sports, God sent an unusual gift in using bowls. He's one in a generation type guy. Are you with me? He also sent a guy from America, the fundamental runner, Johnson, Michael Johnson, who runs like this. Try that. <laughs> Try to run 400 meters like that. It's a once in a generation type gift. You understand that? It's like a Samson gift. It's like a Mozart gift. It's like a Venus sisters gift. So I said, in the same realm, God doesn't only send it in the field of arts and entertainment. He sends it in the spiritual as well. And I said, hey, hey, hey. prophet evil angel is that in spiritual leadership. Because He's unusual that he is at the top of three realms. He's a star in the spiritual. Nobody has ever prophesied international prophecy like this man. My father, never. Never. Documented. He's at the top of business. And he's at the top of politics. That's a highly unusual Gifting. You understand? Is a highly unusual gifting. There's like somebody that wins four gold medals at the Olympics. You say, boy, this is unusual. You understand? Unusual giftings. And they set a record that stands for many generations. He said, so you have that in every field of human endeavor. God sends these stars. The Samsons and Solomons of their era in a realm. And I said, so I recognize that is who he is. Jesus. Oh boy. Yes. Ha. Ah. Is somebody ready to rise? Come in, come right now. Sure.